Hello guys, welcome to Career Compass. This is Deepan Ghatalia, your tutor for ACCA UKTEX and SBL paper. Now let's start with the chapter. It's a CGD variations to the computation. That means that your CGD pro forma may vary in the specific kind of the situation. And what exactly is the situation? The first situation is the if any person, if the seller, if person is transacting with the connected person, then in that situation your CGD pro forma will be the different one. Not the whole pro forma, but we know that the disposal proceed cannot be taken up as an actual disposal proceed you instead that have to write the market value as an disposal proceed so that is the result if the person is transacting with the connected person now the most important thing is that which people or what kind of the people are considered to be in as a connected person so the first one is the spouse the second one is the relatives the third one is the spouse's relatives the fourth one is their business associates and the fourth one is the company that they control these are the persons are considered to be as a connected person students so you have to mug up here students in the definition we have seen one word which is the relative so let's see the definition of the relative also because we don't know that which people are considered to be as a relative so relative can be the brother or sister the parents grand parents and the ancestors and the third one is the children grandchildren and the descendants these people are called as an relatives and these people will be considered as an connected person according to the definition okay one more word we should learn and that is the business associate so it is the partners in the business their spouse and the relatives of the business partners will be included as an business associates here students uh, we already know that what will happen if we are transacting with the connected person it's a very simple thing that uh, disposal proceed will be written as in market value so students according to that rule what we will going to do the disposal proceed will be the market value less cost but the cost will be the actual one so you will have the gain amount so that that gain amount will be taxed uh, normally but now what if suppose you have done the transaction with the connected person you have taken up the disposal proceed at the as the market value but instead of the gain you have got the loss then that particular loss can only be set off against the current or future gains arising from the disposal to the same connected person so i hope you remember this i hope you are getting this point but still if you are having an issue please feel free to ask me so we can conclude that if you are doing the transaction with connected person there are two possibilities there are two tax treatment that we have to remember there are two variations of the tax rules that we have to mug up so here we are done with this students this whole connected person aspect but the next topic is the transaction with the spouse so you will tell me that sir if we are doing transaction with the spouse then it will be considered under the connected person no students the spouse or transaction with the spouse is treated separately it will not going to follow the normal kind of the rules or whatever rules that we have studied in the past or uh, the any kind of the connected person rules will not be applied over here i know spouse is a connected person but still there is a special kind of the rules which will going to be applied to the spouse students it's a very simple that um, whenever you do transaction with the spouse the whole transaction will be considered as a no gain no loss transaction now students you will be thinking that what does it mean by no gain no loss it's very simple that students uh, after preparing the cgt pro forma uh, there should be no gain and there should not be any kind of the losses that means gain or losses should be zero now technically that is only and only possible if your disposal proceed amount and the cost amount is equal let's say your disposal proceed um, is 15000 and your cost is 10000 then it's not possible to have a zero gain zero loss no it's only possible that whatever is the cost amount let's say cost is 10000 and um, your disposal proceeds is also 10000 pound then and then only both the amount can get set off and you will get the zero amount as in gain or loss so that's why students uh, here we have to understand that any kind of the transaction with the spouse will be considered as a no gain no loss that means that uh, whatever is the cost amount you have written the same amount should be written in the disposal proceed it's the disposal proceed right now over here is that students it's not actual disposal proceed it's not also in market value but just to make this whole pro forma uh, technically possible as a no gain no loss 
we are writing the disposal proceed amount same as the acquisition cost amount so you can see in the screen students i have compared both the aspect what we usually do normally and what right now we are doing here right and on the right hand side of the screen you can see that uh, we just have to make it no gain no loss so compulsorily so that's why i have written the disposal proceed amount same as the cost amount okay so i hope you are getting this point but students these rules only apply when the couples are living together here students the married couple can take in tax advantage uh, of this rule through various ways couples can transfer the assets at no gain no loss between them to utilize any other capital loss or to utilize their annual exempt amount or it may be possible that the asset which can have the higher capital gain should be transferred to the spouse paying the lower income tax or lower cgt tax then after there is one more benefit that the asset can be sold in pieces so the person will have a small amount of the gain each year and so they can fully utilize the annual exempt amount every year so i think that these are the benefits of uh, um having the transaction between the couple and uh, students this these are the tax benefit that they can enjoy they can take advantage by a proper uh, tax planning so here we can say here we are done with this topic also students so now let's come to the next topic which is the part disposal students part disposal will going to be applied with a very specific situation and uh, not all the assets can be disposed in a part let's say suppose you are having the laptop how can you sell your laptop in parts so it's not possible so only few asset can be sold in a part students like land build land and building or the uh, let's say suppose shares these kind of the assets can only and only be sold in the part but what will happen in this situation students the part disposal pro forma uh, will be a little bit the different one uh, the disposal proceed will remain as it is but students as we are not disposing the whole uh, asset right now we are just disposing the part of the asset we cannot deduct the full amount of the cost we cannot deduct the total cost of the asset so that's why there is a formula you can see over here it's a given it's a cost multiplied by a divided by a plus b a is equal to market value of the part disposed of and b is equal to market value of the remaining part now this formula is nothing but we are just converting our 10 acres land cost into the cost of 6 acres land okay so i hope you are getting this point so here we are done with this part disposal also students if you are having any query feel free to ask then after the next concept is the chattels now what does it mean by chattels it's a tangible movable property tangible movable asset uh, lots of students are not clear with this uh, definition students but read this definition two to three times you will get that what exactly is the chattels now if you see the chattels there are two types of the chattels that can be possible the non wasting chattels and the wasting chattels non wasting chattels are nothing but it's any kind of the chattel having useful life of more than 50 years and the wasting chattels that means any kind of the asset with the remaining useful life of less than or equal to 50 years so it's a very simple definition students it's not that much difficult but now important things are coming up now students so what will be the tax treatment of non wasting chattels and what will be the tax treatment of the wasting chattels first of all students let's turn learn the tax treatment of the non wasting chattels okay now whenever you have been given with the non wasting chattel students like paintings or antique items or any in that kind of the assets uh then at that time the rule of 66000 or uh, we can say the 6000 rule will going to be applied students now that name is given by me personally so you can see on the screen that there is a whole kind of the rule given now no no wasting chattels the tax treatment will be based on these whole uh, tables students you just have to see that what exactly is your cost and what exactly is your disposal proceed if cost and disposal proceed both are less than 6000 then it will be exempted but if the cost is less than 6000 but disposal proceed is more than 6000 then you you can see on the screen that it will be taxed on a lower of normal calculation or 5 by 3 multiply by disposal proceed less 6000 now that has to be marked up then after uh, you can see the if the cost is more than 6000 and the disposal proceed is less than 6000 you know what exactly is the treatment and the last is the normal cgt computation if both the things are more than 6000 pound so i hope you are getting this point now let's come to the uh, students wasting chattels 
now generally the wasting chattels are an exempt from the cgt and you don't need to worry about wasting chattels but there is an exception and the exception is nothing but the plant and machinery that we use in our business now plant and machinery is are taxable even if it is a wasting chattel there is an exception and if plant and machinery is are sold at a gain then you have to apply 6000 rule that we have just recently seen but if the plant and machinery is are sold at a loss then you have to ignore for the cgt purpose why because students even if we have incurred the loss but as it's a business asset we may have already claimed the capital allowance for that so you don't need to worry about the loss because that loss is already claimed into the pnl as an capital allowance okay so that's why with that particular logic students here the cgt is ignoring the loss okay now the here we are done with the chattels also student next aspect is the other wasting asset but not a chattels there are lots of kind of assets uh, which are either not tangible one or not movable one so because of that that cannot be considered as an chattels but there are uh, uh, wasting chattels okay so now the variations to the computation is very simple students you can see on the screen what you need to do disposal proceed less wdv of the asset instead of cost original cost of asset i have just replaced that original cost of asset with the wdv of the asset so we are not required to deduct the whole cost but we are just have to deduct the wdv of that asset now i don't require to teach what and how to calculate wdv that you already know how to calculate wdv okay so here we are done with this topic also next topic is a very important one that is the asset lost or destroyed students asset lost and destroyed will first of all uh, now this this whole concept is a very logical one and very conceptual one it's a very difficult for me also to explain this whole concept in just 5 minutes with the highest amount of satisfaction no it's not possible but i will try my best to give you the maximum explanation through the rapid revision uh, right now but let's start with it the asset lost and destroyed students there are two possibility first of all you can see on the screen either the person have taken up the insurance and either the person may not have taken up the insurance so if the person have not taken up any insurance then in that case the disposal proceed or insurance proceed will always be the nil zero but he he has already incurred the cost at the time of purchase so that's why we have to deduct the cost and it will result into the capital loss but students it may be possible that the person may have taken up the insurance and have received the insurance also so if the person has taken up the insurance and have got the insurance proceed then in that case we further have to ask that what that person have done with the money of insurance uh, how he actually used that money whether that money of the insurance uh, have been invested fully or whether that money has been invested partially or the money is not at all invested into the uh, purchasing the new asset okay so there are three possibilities you can see students if the person have not in reinvested the amount then what we need to do then it's a very simple insurance proceed less cost and is equal to it will be the chargeable gain okay so that was a students very easy treatment that is a simple punishment to the person that the person have got the insurance but have not reinvested uh, any amount so that's why the capital gain will arise and the tax tax will be levied depending on the student circumstances but capital gain will arise the second possibility is the the person have reinvested fully so that person is a very good person uh, he has invested all the amount into purchasing the new asset and he didn't kept any amount into his pocket uh, for the personal use so that's why uh, we call in the hindi as in devmanus so he the, the the that particular situation will be a very good situation and uh, you can see on the screen that whatever gain is arising we are claiming the full ro rollover relief and our gain or loss amount is becoming a zero so it's a very good situation but compulsion is that there has to be the full reinvestment but once you are claiming the rorr students you know that the rollover relief is nothing but it is a deferment of your gain you are just deferring your gain so it doesn't mean that once you are claiming rorr you are not required to pay cgt in your whole life no you may have to or you will have to pay the cgt on whatever deferment you have got right now 
so ror is just a deferment it will going to impact the original cost of your new assets run so that's why we usually calculate the base cost and the base cost formula is also given here and the last one is the what will happen if we reinvesting the partial amount only then in that situation we are half good half bad the person is uh, not fully devmanus and uh, but still he has reinvested the amount so that's why he is a good person partially so that's why what we will going to do we uh, will going to claim the ror partially and so that because of that reason gain or loss amount will uh, come up uh, the chargeable gain will arise but not fully it will chargeable gain will be will also come up as an partial amount also but it depends the students that uh, what exactly is your total gain amount and students so how much proceeds you have not reinvested depending on that your chargeable gain will arise okay so here we are done with this topic also students so the asset lost or destroyed now let's come to the next aspect and the last aspect which is the asset damaged if you, the person have uh, got damaged with uh, any asset and uh, now in that situation students generally uh, that damage um incurred to that asset will not result into the uh, losing of the possession of that asset if let's say, suppose my mobile phone's battery is damaged then it doesn't mean that i will lose the possession of my phone no i will still uh, use that uh, mobile phone uh, with the like some i will face some issue now uh, i will face some inconvenience but it doesn't mean i am disposing my asset or i am losing the possession of my asset okay i will still continue to use that asset with me so that's why generally this if my asset is getting damaged it is not or uh, it should not result into the disposal it should not result into the cgt why because we are not transferring this asset we are not disposing this asset so that's why i don't think that cgt should be levied over here but still we have to see the cgt aspect uh, there are possibility in some situation where the cgt implications can arise now first of all see that whether the insurance have been received on damage or not let's suppose we have not received any insurance then in that situation no chargeable disposal so that means no cgt implication will arise but students if your asset is damaged and if you are receiving the insurance proceed not fully partial insurance proceed is being received then in that situation that will result into the part disposal concept and it will be treated just like as in part disposal okay so i hope you are getting this point but you just have to take care of the cgt pro forma because once again you have to apply that formula of part disposal cost into a divided by a plus b but here the a is equal to insurance proceed and b is equal to market value of the damaged asset so that means that it may result into the cgt liability if you have received the insurance proceed but now no one wants to pay the cgt so there is an election available students if you in this situation don't want to pay the cgt on your part disposal then the election is available but if the asset is the first of all the known wasting asset and the insurance that you have received insurance proceed that you have received received is fully used or almost fully used to repair the asset then in that situation students the election is available if you have used more than 95 percentage of your uh, insurance into repairing the asset then right now no part disposal or right now no cgt whatever insurance proceed you have received uh, that that will be deducted from the original cost student so almost we are getting the deferment right now so that is the good thing and uh, the other thing that you can see on the right hand side is not examinable for the examination so i hope you are getting this point uh, but students if you are having any query feel free to ask me here we are done with this chapter so we will do the next chapter in the next video thank you guys see you bye